Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome to update number four. Now if you haven't seen the first few updates, you'll want to check them out because it'll bring you up to speed with what we're doing today. We covered a lot of information that's going to be applied right here in this video. We're going to cover bench work and customizing locomotives. So get your paper and pencils ready because there's going to be a test when we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, bench work. It is what it is and it has to be done. If you're all caught up, you'll know the layout is basically just a spin-off of the classic 4x8. The only difference is it's split down the middle and both sections are pushed apart. This diagram represents one of those sections. What we're going to do today is create that bench work and the uprights for the backdrops. In the original design, we talked about using boards that were about 10 inches tall. We decided to change that and use something a little taller. We're going to start by cutting all four end pieces together. Because the depth of the layout needs to be 24 inches, we're going to go ahead and cut those end pieces to 22 and a half. That way they'll fit inside the front and back and equal 24 inches. If you're doing the math, you'll realize that those pine boards are actually three quarters of an inch thick each. We're using a full piece of that pine board, so we're going to go ahead and lop off some of the end there to make sure we got a square cut. And they all look good, so we're going to move on to the next step. It's always good to take a tape measure with you to the lumber store, because the label is always different from what the actual measurements are. These pine boards actually measure something in the neighborhood of nine and three quarters, so we're going to put three equal marks on there so we can drill our screw holes. Now going back to some of the previous videos, we talked about Craig screws. Although we're working with them here in the video, if you're not sure what they are or how they work, just do a quick Google search for Craig, K-R-E-G, screws. And there you have it. So let's swap out our drill bit for the Craig screw driver bit. Using this method will not only give us a strong frame, it'll also be adjustable. We can take it apart and put it back together. Once we had one end done, we went ahead and turned the module on its side to make it a little bit easier. As you can see, everything's clamped together. Well, at least our two module sections are. And what we want to talk about now is we want to talk about the height of this layout. And right now, on the workbench, this thing's sitting at about 44 inches. To me, that's a little low. And I know it's great for kids at train shows and things, but really, the people that are going to be operating this aren't going to want to be bent over unless it's a little short here. I won't name anyone. But for me, I like the layout that's a little bit taller something I don't have to lean so far over, and especially when I take pictures, I don't want to have to squat down. I'm getting older. So I want to put something up about here, where if I want to get down to track level, I can just bend down just a little bit, and also it's easy to work on. Down here, it's easy to work on, but the thing is, once you start soldering track and placing details and scenery, I'm end up hunching over the whole time, and I can't do that. So we're going to shoot for about 50 inches on this, and when Matt makes the carts, he's going to take that into consideration. And it's going to put it to about right here. And that's the same as the old spruce, the ON30 version of the spruce. He doesn't like to appear on video and he doesn't get a lot of credit, but I'd like to thank my brother Matt for always helping with the projects that we do. Here's one of the carts, and it's 30 inches long by 22 and a half inches wide. It'll fit right inside that module. The general idea with the cart is to make it easy to move the layout around, whether it's into a show or around the shop. Now, although they could be, they're not going to be permanently attached to the layout. At this point, and for reference, the only pieces that have been permanently mounted inside the module are the cross member braces and the stops. The stops are those four little pieces of wood that you see. If you look at those two by fours, one's the cross member mounted to the module and the other one is part of the cart. When we get a little further along, we're going to drill some holes and put some dowels in there to keep everything lined up, as well as some bolts. Excuse me. Wow, well, I hope you guys didn't just eat lunch. Alright, now that we got the frames put together, let's talk about those uprights that we're going to install the backdrops in. And here's one of those full-size printed mock-ups from update number three. We're going to use this to help us locate the backdrop uprights. This one's going to represent the town side of the layout, and it's a little bit different than the other side. 
The backdrop for the town side of the layout is going to be situated closer to the front of the layout than the other side, and that's going to allow for that track you see to run behind it. With all that said, the uprights for the town side of the layout are going to be 24 inches tall and 4 inches wide. Now the groove for the backdrop is going to be a half inch wide, and it's going to be located a half inch in from the front of that upright. See, here's where the beauty of those Craig screws come into play. We can actually take the whole side of the layout with the upright off. That's right, we're going to make one cut, and it's going to cut through the upright and the end at the same time. Ah, looks like it made a nice cut. Now we can put this whole L-shaped piece back on the module. Ah, don't you love it when a plan comes together? If you'll remember, that upright piece is 24 inches tall off the layout, but this gives us a chance to put a taller backdrop in there. We can move it up and down to fit the contours of the scenery. As needed. Have y'all ever heard of saying, you dream it, we can build it? Well, imagination is a very powerful thing and sometimes often dangerous for those around me. Just like in the real railroad industry, everything plays its part. And when it's finished playing its part, well, it plays another part. Ah, uh, what do they call that? Repurposing? Well, they don't actually sell spruce locomotives down at your local hobby shop, but we have an idea. We? Yep, we. And I don't have a mouse in my pocket, but I do have Brandon Bennett sitting next to me. You see, Brandon's no stranger to the spruce. Matter of fact, he's been around for a long time. Young Brandon's been involved in model railroading as long as he can remember. As a matter of fact, he's the current vice president of the Bunker Hill Train Club and manager of Loco Joe's Hobby Shop. When I asked Brandon if he wanted to get involved, he jumped right in. Poor guy, he didn't know what he was in for. There's going to be a whole fleet of equipment for the new spruce layout, but we wanted to start out with something simple. Well, of course, simple in my head meant a lot of hard work for Brandon in the form of complete rebuilds. Now, every model is different, but believe it or not, Brandon was able to strip this locomotive by simply soaking it in 91% alcohol for a few hours. Now, for you old school guys, that's not the drinking kind we're talking about. All right, heads up. Brandon uses a dual action airbrush and a Badger compressor. He uses Tamiya paints and also Model Master Clear. Everyone has their own way of doing things, especially when it comes to mixing paint. Brandon uses a mixture of four parts paint to one part alcohol. But like any other art form, you should always test. Now, of course, I'm not going to make you sit through Brandon painting every part on this locomotive, but you get the idea. Now, the reason Brandon's working so fast is because when I left for Europe, I gave him strict orders to have everything done by the time I got back. And again, we can't show everything in this video, but in between coats, Brandon can focus on the cab, the frame, the trucks, and the detail parts. Now, with these Tamiya acrylic paints, Brandon tells me that they're a breeze to clean up with, using only water. All right, after several coats of paint, we can now move on to the clear coat, and this is going to be Tester's Model Master Acrylic. Wow, that looks great. It's like fine art. Now, this is my favorite part of the build, and it's time to give these beauties an identity of their own. Custom decals. But again, they don't exactly sell spruce decals in the local hobby shop. We had to create these on a computer and send them off to have them printed in white ink. Now, the truth is, Brandon was having so much fun working on these locomotives, he wouldn't even let me help. Now, trust me, from years in the hobby, don't ever use scissors to make your final cut on decals. Make sure you use a nice, sharp X-Acto knife to get a real fine edge. 
This will make your life a lot easier when you go to smooth these things out. You'll have a nice transition. Now for those of you that have never applied decals before, it's a fairly simple process, but it all comes down to the finish you're working on and also smoothing these things out so you don't have any air pockets. Applying decals is a time-consuming process, especially with the number of decals you have on one locomotive, but as you can see, Brandon's taking his time and working everything in nice and smooth. Obviously the larger decals are easier to work with, but the smaller decals take a little bit of finesse. Now there's a few different solutions that you can use that are commercially available. One is Microset and the other is Microsol. Now for your own reference you can go online and Google these two different products and see what the physical differences are. But for the application here we're just using the Microsol to help seat the decal. This will soften the decal and help it work into the fine details on the locomotive. After all the decals are in place and dry the whole locomotive is going to receive a finish of dull coat. To round things out, this locomotive was fitted with a TCS sound decoder, TCS speaker, and LED lighting. You ever heard that saying, give him an inch, he'll take a mile? Mm-hmm. While we were gone, I also had Brandon whip up a few custom cabis. These beautiful cabis, along with some other rolling stuff, that didn't sound right. Those cabooses will be featured in an upcoming uh, video. Thanks, Brandon. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and follow the progress. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.